Hi, this is Dan Bullard, retired electronics engineer, sitting in the front deck of my house boat again. Summer's over, you can tell it's been raining. It's really, it's not that cold, but you know, I got my heater on anyway. Okay, I want to make this really short. I got this message on one of my videos. It says, hello, Sir Bullard. May I please request if you could teach us about how to go about calculating and drawing the magnitude response of an AC coupled non-inverting amplifier. I'm still having a hard time understanding it when it involves AC. Thanks a bunch. Well, you know, I'd like to do everything, but um, I don't do AC coupled anything. <laughs> okay, um, that doesn't mean I can't talk about it and show you what's going on. Um, when I do tests, and that's what I do, I do tests. When I do tests, everything's DC coupled. Very, very rarely do I do AC coupled stuff. I mean, I just don't do it, I just don't. Um, in one case, I was teaching a class, and uh, these guys came up to me on a break, and uh, I forget where they were from, Germany or something, and they said, we're having a problem. We have an amplifier, we're getting the signal, we're doing the FFT and we're getting all this swoopy stuff. And it shouldn't be that way. I'm like, yeah, I checked their numbers and they were coherent all right. And so I asked them to show me the signal, the circuit that they were using, and it was an AC coupled amplifier. Now, that's a big mistake. AC coupling is a big mistake. Don't trust anybody that does AC coupling. I mean, if you go look at a schematic of an op amp, your typical op amp has a lot of transistors in it. They don't do any AC coupling in there. It's all DC coupled. That's the proper way to do it. Now, when I worked on radio, that was back in the olden days, and they used tubes, and you had to AC couple everything. But now it can all be DC coupled. And But let me try to answer your question. AC couple. Let me show you this schematic that I did up. Um, this is something that I did some time ago. AC coupling one stage to the next for whatever reason. Who knows? There's an offset or something got to remove. That's a 10 microfarad cap and a 100K resistor. Now, what's the problem with that? If you're going to test this part, remember test time is everything. So 10 microfarads, 100K, do the math, that's a one second time constant. One second. That's a standard interview trick, you know. When you're doing interview stuff, the answer will almost always be one, you know. Just remember um, Galaxy Quest, it always stops on one. Okay, 10 microfarad, 100K, that's a one second time constant. That's a problem because it takes five time constants minimum to get through the charging time. And I, would, I usually make it 10, you know, if I have to do that. So never, ever do that. Now, I told you about a, a device that I tested, a TV tuner chip. TV tuner on a chip, and I tested it in 10 seconds. So I'm talking about now taking 10 seconds to test this thing. The uh, uh, MEMS device that I did for analog devices took a half a second. I can't have any AC coupled crap there. I can't waste 10 seconds of sitting around doing nothing. That tester's got to be working. And uh, it costs, I think, it's, I think it's over $100 an hour test time for a tester. So you don't want to waste this time. So in this case, what I did, I showed them, your problem is you're charging up your capacitor and it's causing the smearing because it assumes that charge curve is going to repeat. And so that's just considered a non-coherent waveform and it smears the spectrum. So you cannot do that. You can't use AC coupling. I'll get to your question in a minute. So, uh, what you do is use a relay drive. Remember, I showed you that uh, uh, ITS 9000 GX that had all those pins and it had all those relay drives. Every pin 
virtually every pin has a relay drive. Not only do you have the highs and lows coming from the digital pins, or you can capture and compare highs and lows with your digital pins. Every pin pretty much gets a relay drive. And so those relay drives are just zero and five volts. And so you can drive a high, drive a low, and it's just computer controlled. You don't get any timing with that. So you can just, you know, use a statement, you know, open relay K12 on pin, that's pin 12. Close relay K12. And so pin 12 closes the relay. But it's only a relay drive. It doesn't have any timing and it's not programmable values for voltage or current. So it's just a relay drive for open collector kind of thing, or um, uh, in this case, I'm gonna drive a MOSFET. And so if, if I drive a low, that transistor would be off. That's an in-channel MOSFET. But if I drive a high, that in-channel MOSFET will turn on and what that'll do is that'll allow that 10 microfarad capacitor to charge very quickly, very quickly. So what I do is I flip that relay drive high for a short amount of time, whatever, a couple milliseconds, whatever, and that'll, that'll charge up that 10 microfarad cap. Then I can turn that relay drive off, and now it's driving that signal into 100 K ohms. And so there you go. The capacitor's charged. It didn't take five time constants or ten time constants. It only took a few milliseconds. Not nanoseconds, but it only took a few milliseconds to charge up. Now, if you if you have to do AC coupling, if you have to, then what you're going to have to consider is what's the output impedance of that amplifier. Let's imagine that amplifier has zero impedance. There's a 10 microfarad and 100 K ohm input impedance. So you should be able to do the math on that. Other than that, I really, I don't want to speak out of ignorance, but there you go. That's how it works. I don't do AC coupling. I don't design AC couple stuff, never. I mean, um, this is as close to something that a friend of mine, and I've mentioned before, Mike Furland, Mike Furlan came up with this brilliant circuit, and I tried designing it a few times, but I never could get it. He did this brilliant circuit where he took a sample and hold, and he turned it into a sample and forget. And that's kind of what this is. It samples the voltage, the DC offset, and then it adds it in with a negative sign and forgets it, basically deletes it out. Now that's what this does too. It deletes out the DC offset. But Mike's circuit was so good. Mike was a brilliant, brilliant man. And I tried keeping up with him. I, it was really tough. It was really tough. I tried working with him once on the next test on Maverick. And he was going so fast. You know, he was like, well, let's check this point here. I'm like, okay, well, why do you want to do that? He was a well, little Tell me what the voltage is. So, okay, there it is. He says, now let's check the next point. Why, Mike? He was going too fast for me, but um, brilliant guy. But he came up with some really cool stuff. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. So it was, it was a good thing to know Mike. It was a good thing to know Gaber. Good thing to know Mike. That's what you need to do. You need to get somebody who can help you figure these things out. And um, he wasn't perfect, though. His daughter, I talked about her, Kristen, she was great, she was great. But she was begging me to teach her some stuff about electronics. And I'm like, Kristen, why don't you just ask your dad, you know? <laughs> Mike Furland is her dad, you know? Ask your dad. She says, I can't understand anything he tells me. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so I was able to help Kristen with a lot of stuff. She asked me why, what RF stood for. She was in marketing and they were trying to come up with stuff for the new tester, which was a quartet, which was digital, analog, mix signal, and RF. And she says, Dan, what's RF? And I says, well, why don't you ask your dad? She says, I never understand anything he tells me. I said, okay, I'll tell you what RF is. It means real fast. 
And so she says, okay, cool, thanks. And I went back later and I said, no, Chris, I'm sorry, it means radio frequency, like AM and FM and TV and that kind of stuff. So I, I love Chris and she's great. Her dad was cool too. Mike Furland, he was brilliant. So it was great to know these people. And the reason I knew Kristen is because Mike got her a job at Credence back on the East Coast in Burlington, Massachusetts. And then they moved out here to Oregon. And Kristen moved out along with her husband. And Mike moved out with his wife. And that was really great. I hope that, I, you know, I, I can't talk to, about things that I've never done things with. I mean, I didn't do anything with with the AC couple stuff. But you can kind of work it out if you know how to calculate the reactance of a capacitor. You can do that. 1 over 2 pi, FC, blah, blah, blah. That kind of thing. But um, I don't want to speak without, you know, having some experience. And I don't have any experience in that. When I do tests, I do everything DC coupled. Everything is DC coupled. If I need to remove a DC offset, I'll use a DAC to do that. Or I'll use Mike's sample and forget circuit. But, uh, or this other circuit. But I, I don't want to speak out of turn, okay? Okay, so, uh, once again, this is Dan Bullard from the river. See ya.